I'm Bridget Fettesey, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the weeks of January 3rd to January 16th. May God have mercy on our souls. <laughs> <laughs> and the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. We started so innocently. We did. Maggie was just posting up clips from episode 16, was it? Uh Uh-huh. We were making fun of funny things like death by Instagram. And Jane Fonda's ethically sourced gold. The first one was (laughs) Jean-Claude Renoir and the woke coming for everything. And now it's pandemics, insurrections, big tech censorship. And a whole lot of stuff that we have been trying to avoid covering here at Dumpster Fire. (laughs) I miss the murder hornets. Remember when it was just a pandemic? So here we are, Dumpster Fire, perfectly appropriately numbered 45. Our last Dumpster Fire with our beloved and hated and revered and loved and controversial and what despised (laughs) yeah disgraced (laughs) president troll in chief that's a nice lead in too (laughs) as we all expected there's been a smooth transition of the presidency (laughs) trump has surrendered power with no issues whatsoever okay maybe i was wrong (laughs) maybe some of my takes didn't age that well part of what the reason that i haven't wanted to even talk at all is because i was so wrong i really thought everyone was exaggerating about this person and it's still hard for me to tell what's an over exaggeration what's actually true because everyone's lost all credibility the president the media any of the pundits nobody knows what to believe and i'm still never really sure it's somewhere between completely justifying insanity and complete histrionic overreactions i've definitely was had to look at myself and i was like what's our role in this should we have been <laughs> laughing at this person this whole time and the answer is yes because ridicule is powerful And we have been mocking everybody, and I'm standing by that. We've joked on here before a broken pundit is right twice a day. And there are lots of people on both sides, but the people who right now are like, we told you, said a lot of things that weren't true for many years and never took responsibility for them not being true and consistently kind of wanted this person to Trump to be the like literally Hitler. And this still seems like kind of a shade of that, which is why it's so challenging to cover because underneath all of this are very serious things that we should take very seriously. But on the face of it, this guy is the face of the insurrection and I'm not supposed to laugh at it. (laughs) (laughs) So tell me in the comments, people, how how do we take this seriously? I should be wearing pearls so I can clutch them. But Beef Man is the mascot for the insurrection. Yeah. It's very challenging to thread this needle. We're not going to do it perfectly. People will probably have issues with all kinds of things we say. And trust me, I have issues with things that, you know, early early 2020 things Bridget has said. 2020 early Bridget has said. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I wish I could go back and smack her in the head. When all of this was breaking last week, or I guess two weeks ago now, you know, the most ridiculous things kind of rose to the surface. You had Beef Man. You had the guy who took the the stand out, the Pel- Pelosi stand. Oh, the speaker stand. It, it looked like almost a parody of an insurrection. There was a grandma with an American flag. <laughs> it didn't seem as bad as it ended up you know, eventually, this is why I can't stand when people kind of run out of the gates with takes. My general feeling is that we should pause and take a breath when stuff like this is breaking. Even Kamala came out and she was saying, oh, the police just let people in and this is all about racism. Not helpful either. We witnessed two systems of justice. When we saw one that let extremists stormed the United States Capitol, and another 
that released tear gas on peaceful protesters last summer. Then it comes out that they did their best. They were completely overwhelmed. A Capitol Police got dragged out and beat. He didn't die. Another one did die. That's why this is so hard to cover. A woman got shot. Yeah, it's definitely a challenging thing to cover because many people died and our hearts are with the families of anyone who lost somebody. It is very serious. And then it's also ridiculous. ridiculous. It's darkly hilarious. (laughs) Thoughts and prayers to anyone who has lost their sense of humor in these darkly hilarious times. (laughs) The reason some of this is so ridiculous is that This is so, there's so much stupidity. Like, thank God America isn't actually smarter. Thank God the dictator isn't as dictatory enough as he probably wants to be or thinks of himself. Thank God his followers aren't as organized and competent. You know, thank God they're all, there's just a level of incompetence that's happening. It's costing a lot of lives when it comes to the pandemic. But in this case, I would say that marble rolled in the right hole. (laughs) Yeah. Incompetence. Sometimes is a is a blessing in disguise. We have a fundamental problem with our education system. That's what I think the real conversation should be about. It should not be about um, Trump and all the things. We should be really looking at how the public school system in America has failed large populations of people. And I understand a lot of the rage when you see this movement, which and protest described in a different completely different way than the protests over the summer, that still doesn't excuse what happened. Your principles can't be based on what the other guy is doing. I say this all the time. If you can't apply your principles to people you don't like, they're garbage. If you can't maintain your principles when other people are acting like garbage, your principles are also garbage. So the whataboutism is not helpful either. And I understand the tendency because it is outrageous. There are some things where the double standards are so egregious. It's It makes sense to be blinded with rage, but don't let that rage blind you so much that you can't see that this is also another outrageous, horrific thing that has happened in a long string of outrageous, terrifying threats to our republic, democracy, and the threads of civil society, which are rapidly coming undone. So try and take that purple pill and free yourself of an ideology or a team and truly ask yourself what your principles are. And I would say that riots, no matter where they're coming from, are bad. Political violence is bad. Can we agree that this escalating political violence of, oh, it's justified when it's my side and your side is bad. This is why I have always hated the idea that speech is violence. It's not. Violence is violence. Escalating political violence is violence. Stabbing each other at rallies is violence. Like, speech is how we find our way through this. We'll just run through what the updates are since the insurrection happened. Our president's being impeached again (laughs) (laughs) for incitement. (laughs) I can't stop laughing. Basically, the Capitol is fully on lockdown. And no, guys, this is not literally Fallujah because you had to freaking drive four hours of traffic in (laughs) D.C. All of Americans steal so much hardship, like literally Hitler. This is just like we're living in Iraq. Like, stop making these ridiculous comparisons to actual serious things. It's like stolen valor. It's right. just the reverse. Go to it's like Iraq. Stolen yeah. victimhood. Go, Go to, to Iraq, a third world country. Come in the Middle back East. Yeah. and then can have the audacity to say that. Yeah. So maybe calm down with your like this is we're literally living under martial law. Although a lot of this does <laughs> we might be by the time this comes out. Um and it might be <laughs> because my pillow guy <laughs> is consulting our president. (laughs) Like, we don't know. This this could age horribly. We could be laughing right now and, like, the whole nation might be on lockdown in three days. It is funny that the whole Capitol is on lockdown for the inauguration. This just seems like (laughs) this is just Trump's ploy to make sure that Biden's inauguration crowd is smaller than his. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Again, on its face, it was a little bit ridiculous. And then you found, saw the cop getting beat by the mob. Get up! 
this is horrible. This is the, f- there's so much, it's a fantasy. All of it is fantasy. Yeah. It's irony within irony. You have the, the like, all cops are bad people now being like, the cops are heroes. All summer long. Outraged talking about- on behalf of the cops. <laughs> yeah. Defund the police, abolish prisons, and now they're like, send that guy to prison. Lock him up forever. And then you have the back the blue and blue lives matter crowd beating an officer to death and many other officers. Like, w- you people have no principles. None. <laughs> Members of Congress were getting upset now because they have to go through metal detectors because, you know, they're, they want to bring guns to Congress and stuff. I will carry my firearm in D.C., and in Congress. There's that like young freshman. She's a crazy person, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> She's like the freshman congresswoman who's like Sarah Palin on steroids. I'm Lauren Boebert, and I approve this message. I just laugh at that. All these Congress people being like, we've got to go through metal detectors. I'm like, oh, you know who else has to go through metal, metal detectors? Children at high schools. Get your shit together. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Like, calm down. Oh, I'm sorry our violence has finally caught up to you, (laughs) our leaders. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly they act when it comes to them. (laughs) There are no fly lists. This is a fun irony. So, you know, conservatives largely, even though Biden was part of the architect of the Patriot Act, but total separate topic. There are no fly lists now for some of the terrorists and quote unquote terrorists, domestic terrorists, people who are at the riots and who might have broken into the Capitol. So... This is funny because online there were all of these liberals making fun of conservatives who were crying about the no fly list because that generally affected the Muslim population. And they were cheering for it when the no fly lists were coming because they didn't think it would ever happen to them. And a lot of people, libertarians in particular, were like, this is bad. This can be used against you. Wake up. And now the liberals who are all cheering for the censorship, we'll get to that, are laughing at the people laughing at no fly list. I'm like, censorship can happen to you. It's just like, it's layers upon layers upon layers of irony and lack of self-awareness. Right. And meanwhile, we're all fighting amongst ourselves. And... More surveillance, less freedom, taking away, stripping of our rights, and they're happily making sure that we're all just fighting amongst ourselves, Mm -hmm. hating each other. We're just marching into uh, authoritarianism no matter which direction we march. I hate everything. Baked Alaska is a pretty famous, uh, he's been banned from a lot of platforms. He's a white nationalist, I believe, and he got um, his live stream of his breaking into the Capitol was used to arrest a bunch of people. Here's another fun irony. The people who are worried that they're going to be microchipped by Bill Gates didn't think to turn their GPS off (laughs) on their phones when they were raiding the Capitol in an insurrection. You guys are suck at this. (laughs) I'm too stupid to hate Bill Gates, and clearly you are too, because (laughs) you're just letting everyone track you. What did you fucking think was going to happen to you? It's like that realtor who got arrested, too. Oh, my gosh. Beyond parody. And she was, like, advertising for her real estate company. Y'all know who to hire for your realtor. Jenna Ryan, your realtor. I don't know. Some of her messaging was like, we're going to go free our country it's like what was your goal here what how were you planning on doing that yeah. exactly what what was the end game this was this is like <laughs> step one steal underpants and, you know step three make money <laughs> there's a lot of guys who went with their moms one guy the zip tie guy the famous guy with the zip ties he brought his mom to the insurrection it reminds me of that meme that was going around this summer that was hilarious it said mom said she can drive us to the civil war but she can't pick us up <laughs> And it was like, there were so many of these guys talking about their moms, lived in their moms. It, it, it was not even, like, the stereotype didn't even, it it came true. When parody becomes reality. Yeah, it's beyond. We are beyond. We are living. We are in a fetacy. We are living in a fetacy. This is the age of fetacy. Anyway, uh, none of this is good. And it sets horrible precedents. <laughs> and any of the goodwill 
this is what kills me. I mean, talk about breaking your ankle on the dismount. Whether I'm not going to get into the weeds about whether or not this was actually incited by the president because I'm not smart enough to litigate that stuff. And neither are you probably person who's in the comments. Um, (laughs) Offended. (laughs) But I do think it's unfortunate because had he just shut his fucking mouth and after he brought the legal challenges that he brought to the different places and they were rejected and he had said, okay, I tried what I could. They've been brought to the court of law. They were all thrown out for the most part. I I concede. Good luck to you, America, with your totalitarian left-wing leadership. Congratulations, Biden. And I'm now going to go back to my golf courses instead of burning it all fucking down with them. Anything good that he might have done that anybody agreed with them has, is going to be overshadowed by this. His kids are disgraced, like not will not be allowed in polite society. They're already getting rejected from country clubs. I will light a candle for them tonight. <laughs> this is textbook narcissist. Uh-huh. Cannot admit defeat, cannot admit wrong, will literally burn the entire country down in order to be right or to not have to admit to himself that he lost. I'm starting to think that Trump might be a like a a like a a deep state plant. (laughs) Yeah. For the Democratic Party. Oh, no. They've got like they have excuses for everything. Tech censorship leading into tech censorship. Let's talk about that. Get wrecked. Big tech. Get wrecked. Big tech. Twitter bans Trump for good, yeah. leading to a string of other tech bans. And it's all. weird how those dominoes all just fall at once. Yeah, this is why it was so hard to cover last week. In the in the wake of the insurrection, there was a social media purge of Donald Trump. Whatever your thoughts about Donald Trump are, it is to me a chilling overreach of social media. Because they can disappear at the sitting president of the United States from the entire internet. Mm. It was like it's he couldn't insane. even go. On, he couldn't even go on Shopify. Shopify banned him. Like, what's he gonna? What is he gonna do on Shopify? Just start putting his tweets on T-shirts and selling them. That would have been a good idea, by the way. Jack just this past week was like, I'm not really that comfortable with it, except I think I had to do it. It's ridiculous. All all of it is terrifying. If you can't see why this is chilling and terrifying, I will be sticking up for you if they ever come for you and ban you because it's really just a kill shot. They can do whatever they want. It's a dangerous precedent to set. It's, I mean, I am, you know, historically left leaning and this is deeply chilling. Are you chilling. openly left? <laughs> Not I don't anymore. know what I am anymore. I've been purple pilled at this point Maggie's because I'm openly left. <laughs> I, I, I'm openly former left. <laughs> It's just digital book burning again. Well, and it's complicated because it is, I am a f- free market. So I do right. believe that, yeah, okay, go make your own Twitter. So they did. So they made their own Twitter and then Amazon removed their ability to host Parler. Right. And so Parler was a good example of, okay, well, what are we supposed to just build our own internet? Yeah, the, the tech stuff, whew. We the tech stuff. Back. Hey, now is a good time for me to remind you. Like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons. The other thing you can do is subscribe to us everywhere you can find us. We'll put a link to we'll our mail- mailing uh, list. The mailing list is a good way until MailChimp boots us. But if that's happening, we're screwed and society is screwed because I'm pretty milk toast. But meh. You're just saying things that people might disagree with. I'm saying things that most people just think, but you can't really say them anymore, which is terrifying. <laughs> But you can say them on fetacy.com. Yeah, so follow us everywhere you can. Instagram, Twitter, just so that in the event that we get booted from one of the places that you do follow us, you have a backup to find us. And fetacy.com is great because in the community, we are able to upload our video there. So in the event that YouTube decides we're a little too racy for YouTube, we the video will still remain. And then we have R.I.P., Trump reply, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so sad when an entire economy gets taken out. 
It was a whole economy. Shuan had posted a like a Reddit thread and someone was just like, I had a Twitter account that would automatically rebut Trump tweets. I have over 100,000 followers, but no idea what to do now. Yeah, there was a whole... There are people who aren't really on Twitter or maybe don't live online, but... There was a whole reply guy on both sides. There were people who hated him and people who loved him. And they made a lot of money and they they got T-shirts and they had yeah. all kinds of... It's its own little economy. And now... taken out. They're like the Remora fish of the internet, though. <laughs> <laughs> They'll go find something else to feed on. Parade of morons. Pro-Trump rioters smear poop in U.S. Capitol hallways. <laughs> How do we know that this wasn't just one of the geriatric leaders? Aunt Tifa. <laughs> it was Nancy Pelosi who got scared when they were breaking in. She's like, I shit myself. <laughs> Too much ice cream. <laughs> She's yelling at her assistant, somebody smear it. We can blame it on those rednecks. Smear it. Did I lock my office? Has anyone seen my computer? <laughs> do people automatically bring poop to rallies now these days? Is that something that happens? I hope there's a video out there of some can riot or taking a poop <laughs> and then <laughs> via getty <laughs> this was hilarious <laughs> we are living in the dumbest times <laughs> which one was it it was the stand guy the yeah, pelosi the stand somebody posted a picture of him and said via getty as in you know the photo was- the photo was from <laughs> <laughs> the Getty photograph. And then it started trending because everybody thought that his name was Via Getty. Right. <laughs> what, what kind of name is Via Getty? They were like, why can't they find this guy? His name's right here. This is just my proof that there's <laughs> stupidity on all sides. They were like, ah, ha, ha. What kind of redneck name is Via Getty? Uh, well, it's Italian. Clearly, you first. didn't do well in public school either. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, the QAnon shaman, AKA Beef Man. <laughs> He's, this was my favorite video. He's apparently a failed improviser too. <laughs> yeah, this is this is like when yes and goes too far. <laughs> yes! is Let's go to the Capitol. Yes, and I'll And now this. I'm a shaman. <laughs> yes, and you also believe in QAnon. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I'm gonna wear these buffalo horns. Part of the reason why I dress this way is because if we were gonna have like a uh, infiltrator or something like that, they'd be a witch, they'd be a sorcerer or something like that. And when they see me, they go, Oh, yeah, we got a we got a big fish out here. And then what are you gonna do? I'm gonna clear we must clear the bad energy from this insurrection. <laughs> when you sing and you drum, especially when you do so really loudly you end up affecting the quantum realm this is what happens when you become a failed improviser sam you end up on a dumb dumpster show fire. in a garage <laughs> <laughs> you end up at a dumpster fire yes and and Fucking hey man glad to see you guys you guys are fucking patriots look at this guy he's got covered in blood god bless you we're living in parody. He gets arrested, cr- cries to his mom, and then whines about not being able to eat organic in jail. No, take your government cheese and your crackers like everyone else. Capitalism always wins. Vendors who identified themselves <laughs> as nah and stop asking me questions before you get your ass kicked <laughs> sell merchandise near the Capitol. <laughs> I, like I love the guys. reporter who's like reporting on this and they're like, and no, uh, you set up this concession stand. What are you doing here? And what's your name? And he's like, stop asking me questions before you get your ass kicked. <laughs> and they're like, via Getty. <laughs> it's all bananas. Uh, There's nothing more American than vendors at riots. <laughs> this is like as American as apple pie. <laughs> but I also love that. It's these two kids selling Trump merch. Yeah, they're like, I'm making. And they're like, it's paying for college. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. they're like, I'm I'm making college money off these idiots. These kids know the rules. They know they're smart. That yep. is, it's very smart. And then, in what is happening, <laughs> Alex Jones is the voice of reason here now. We are fully. We're what's beyond the rabbit hole. That's a fe- it's a fantasy. It's like what's deeper than the rabbit hole? <laughs> I don't know. I'm afraid to find out. Yeah, Alex Jones was at the rally the day of the of the insurrection, but he was trying to get them the people to calm down. He discouraged them him? from storming the Capitol. Yeah, he said, "Let's not give them. We're not Antifa. Let's not give them what they want." We're not Antifa. We're not the 
Yeah, let's not fight the police and give the system what they want. Because it's a trap, Alex Jones would know this. He's been right about more things than I care to admit. It's not zero, which is creepy. And then he was trying to get their attention. The only way he could was by chanting USA, which I thought was hilarious. USA! 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 I don't know why I personally (laughs) found that amazing. And then he went on this rant on his show about how QAnon is full of shit. And he was like, oh, you've lost me, Q. Q tells us stuff in all of its lies, is what I'm saying. You keep keep interrupting me. Because you're lying. Because you're full of shit. That's why. How fucking crazy do you have to be to lose Alex Jones? He talks about gay frogs and he's talking, then he's yelling at them about witches and warlocks. Ugh. God. Didn't he call Hillary Clinton a hobgoblin? <laughs> he did. <laughs> then we have a human rights attorney was accused of posing as a Latina for years. White women are wild and out. What is going on? They're all just appropriating entire races now. Uh huh. I guess it is generally seen as maybe progress i'm looking for the silver line right we should we should see it as a, a turn they of the tides a little more bit more inclusive well no it's like instead of people being worrying about being white passing white people are like Trying i need to, pass to be for people pass- of color yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i need to be more people of color passing it's just a bit of a Changing of the guard. Fetacy because is, we're in the rabbit hole where nothing makes sense. <laughs> Fetacy is no longer 33.33% minority. We are 100% we are now minority. 100% minority. <laughs> uh, I'm Asian passing. Speaking of Asian, get wrecked, China. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese billionaire Jack Ma has been missing for several weeks after criticizing China's financial system. He still hasn't been found. Being a billionaire won't save you. Under a communist regime, (laughs) they'll disappear you, as they do in Russia as well. Okay, and then Chinese government spins forced sterilization of Uyghurs in dystopian tweet. That was insane. They've been, it's been deleted because it was so horrific. And I think in the wake of the Trump stuff, I'm not exactly sure when it got deleted, whether it was pre-Trump getting banned or post, but I do know there was a lot of talk about how these truly authoritarian dictatorships are allowed to exist and spread their horrible messages on Twitter and then they got rid of Trump. So it, it just was this very, there are no standards clearly at all. The Chinese government tweet was, study shows that in the process of eradicating extremism, the minds of Uyghur women were emancipated and gender equality and re- reproductive health were promoted, making them no longer baby-making machines. They are more confident and independent. That is f***ed. Oh. Pure dystopia. Yeah. For sterilization. Like, oh, I'm stronger and more independent now that they've taken away my reproductive abilities because they want to eradicate my entire people. That's allowed on Twitter. I know. That that was on Twitter for more than at least two hours. Uh-huh. And then we have proof we're living in a simulation. Robot dogs learn how to fend off a human. Stock pile sand. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Well, then we've got cool science. The Earth has been spinning faster lately. I knew it. This was the fastest <laughs> year on record. July 19th was the shortest day on record. This was the only thing I was right about in 2020. <laughs> the days are shorter. Yes. Uh huh. I kept saying it's getting dark earlier than it normally does in daylight savings. Yeah. We, and it, yeah. We said it here on Dumpster Fire. Dumpster diving. What's next (laughs) in the dumpster? (laughs) I'm 42 years old and I'm ridiculous. But at least the children can appreciate my inner ridiculousness. Oh, my gosh. Well, speaking of things that are inappropriate for children. (laughs) Denmark launches an animated TV show titled John Dillermond about a man with a giant uncontrollable penis. Maybe QAnon should all relocate to Denmark because this is clearly the hub of the cabal of pedophiles. (laughs) What is going on? I don't know that that's a great message. Oh, my penis was just out of control. I didn't know what I was doing. You know how many times I've heard that in my life? <laughs> a lot. More than zero. <laughs> 
Well, this is also Denmark was the one several dumpster fires ago <laughs> that was doing like the naked oh, yeah, adults the naked with the show. children ultra strip down. This all feels like grooming to me. Yeah. It's like, weird. oh, look at this man with a penis that he has no control over and these adults who are naked and you need to look at them, children. These, these are all grooming tactics. Freaking Europeans. I do not like. Denmark, man. I appreciate the prudity of the United States. <laughs> Suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> I must put my cleavage away. Just Our YouTube channel gets shut down. Your cleavage was the only thing keeping us on air. <laughs> they look, they're like, oh, cleavage, it's fine. Next. <laughs> she can't be saying anything serious or outrageous. Exactly. They just the pass shirt behind by. her says daddy would be proud. She's fine. Yeah. Next. Oh, cleavage? She's not rallying any rebels or anything. No one will take her seriously <laughs> ever. She just has boobs. <laughs> Breaking Bridget. Well, I think it's safe to say that the entire news cycle has broken me. And the entire way that everything is being covered is breaking us all. And destroying the fabric of our society. One of the ways we can help by dialing things down a little bit, the temperature, which is up to 11 and continuing to rise, is to just step away. Just we're choosing to focus on this. We're choosing to engage. We're choosing to log in and go, what is happening? And not be able to tear away. I understand the rubber necking. It does feel like an online car accident that you cannot tear your eyes away from. But trust me, you would be so much better spent if you were to take the hour that you might spend doom scrolling, which is a crazy word that we even have, and work on yourself. Take a class. Go Work out, go for a walk, go in nature, spend time with your kids, hug your dog, anything other than choosing to invest your precious lifetime in tearing each other apart on social media. And also, watch what you spread. There's tons of misinformation that's being spread. Most of everything that you see is probably misinformation. Take a fucking pause before you share a video that two days later is probably going to find out that it's from like 2017, like a lot of those no-fly list videos that went around were. So pause before you send something. Pause before you say anything. Pause and take some time to... Invest that energy in yourself because your media diet is killing you. It's killing all of us. It's why people have been radicalized to believe all the QAnon crazy shit. It's why people were radicalized to go raid a Capitol because they really thought their president would f***ing be there. Idiots. It's why people burned federal buildings down this summer and why all of us are hating each other. I feel it even when I go online. I see myself going online and feeling that, like, I hate everyone. Well, that's not the way I actually feel. I think most humans are good. I think we've actually all saved each other's asses through this pandemic. Instead, we should just be taking the time to de-escalate the situation in whatever way we can. Go online and try and say something nice to somebody. And if you find yourself with your blood boiling and feeling like you hate everyone, go for a run. Make yourself stronger. Come join us in the fantasy community and work out. There's not much we can do about any of this, but what we can do is instead of eating the potato chip media diet, eat some fucking carrots and hummus instead. And that is my final message. And then Internet is Glorious. There are some good things that can come. Yeah, there's a lot of Internet is Glorious hilarity to be seen. Please send it to us. They pushed me on and faced me. This is what I think, and but th this is why we have you on. It's my opinion. You know, it's yeah. But I really. So my friend works at the New York Times, right? Oh, nice. Oh. Mom and dad are going to be so angry when they realise that I don't want to work down the mines. Fantasy news. 
We had Adrian Appalucci and Ryan Long on Walk-In's Welcome the past two weeks. So check out Walk-In's Welcome. Subscribe to it wherever you can subscribe to podcasts. Leave a review if you love it. Our mission is grit, resilience, and exposing ourselves to different perspectives so that we can make ourselves more intellectually resilient and able to handle opinions that we might not agree with and not, you know, want to go burn their house down because you're a crazy person. (laughs) I was on Hashing It Out with Siraj Hashmi at the Washington Examiner podcast. You know, we have that 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 renegade mentality and that mentality like, hey, this is America. I'll do what I want. And, <laughs> Ran- and- <laughs> Some strong Randy Marsh energy right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I thought this was America. <laughs> it was super fun. We talked about all the things. I got to process a lot of this before I did this shoot. So that was great. I was on The Struggle with Candace Thompson, a fellow comedian, hilarious woman, and Mal, her friend. She's like... <laughs> Um. <laughs> and I'm like, no, Candace, do the ohm a little bit wider, a little bit wider. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Good, actually. <laughs> and that hurts. You're like, I'm meditating on your D. <laughs> yeah. You're giving dudes weird fetishes. The three of us had a great time talking about blowjobs and drugs, which is the lane that I should really stay in, as it is the expertise I have. <laughs> um, I really shouldn't be talking about any of this other shit. Please subscribe to Fetacy.com where you can see the unedited version of this shit show on Sundays. Also available on Patreon. It's also a great community of people. We have a very large and growing segment of women working out every afternoon at noon with me. There's also a morning class now. It's like a, a, a virtual lifestyle gym and people are really supportive and great in there and they really help each other out when they're struggling. So if you're feeling like you're tribeless and alone and politically homeless. You're actually not. There's a lot of us. Join us, and we will welcome you with open arms and recipes and dog pictures. BridgetFetacy.com for your merch. Get yourself a t-shirt. Get yourself a mug. Get yourself a beanie. And we have more stuff coming. We each, we'll also have Watkins Welcome merch coming and more Dumpster Fire merch coming, which is awesome. Like, subscribe, comment. Touch my bells and buttons and tell your friends about us. Subscribe to us wherever you can. If you want to just throw a donation and don't want to subscribe, you can just donate to PayPal, support the crew, support independent thinkers, support free speech. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for your well wishes when we were not doing great last week. And thank you for being a community of people who I feel like The big divide that's happened in the past couple of years has been between the hysterics and the non-hysterics. And I feel like a lot of the viewers of this show are non-hysteric. And I really do appreciate you and your notes of how important this show has been to you has really been meaningful to me because there are many days where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't want to do this because who am I to say anything But apparently, I'm not alone. You make me feel not alone, and you motivate all of us to do this. Because trust me, there are days where we're like, what are we fucking doing? Yeah. Are we part of the problem? Probably. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Thank you, Better Fetacy. Better Fetacy, I want people to know just how much research Better Better Fetacy does. It is extensive, extensive stuff. Thank you, Better Fetacy. We could not do this without you. Better Fetacy has also written some jokes for us as well, so... Great writing job to Better Fetacy. Follow Better Fetacy on Twitter. Thank you, Zen Pro Audio, for the juicy mic and sound. All of your sound needs, go to Zen Pro Audio. Support small businesses like Zen Pro Audio. Thank you to our supporters. Thank you to our subscribers. Thank you just for being you, truly. And thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Sam. It was Sam's birthday yesterday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Sammy Sam. Flaps and Folds. Thank you, thank you. We dedicate this episode to Sammy Flaps and Folds. <laughs> I am honored. This has been your dumpster fire for the weeks of January 3rd to January 16th. I'm Bridget Fetacy. Now make me rich. <laughs> 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 <laughs>